So guys, we're going to see you in the end of the day. And we're going to see you in the end of the day. And we're going to see you in the end of the day. So hello everyone, um, I'm Yiko C, um, and today we're going to talk about the A stem and the way that it changes. So um, A stem verb conjugations is the topic for today. So before we get into A stem verb conjugations, I just want to give you a little context on um, what we're learning based on um, our individual language acquisition. So um, the first few years, once you start learning Oneida, it's really about building a foundation, especially as a second language learner. It's learning the sounds of our language, the sounds of the letters, sound combinations, the pronouns of every stem, um, some basic nouns, A and C stem nouns, counting, um, and basically fundamentals like that. So moving on, um, and adding to that foundation includes understanding verb conjugation. So um, all verb conjugations in Oneida are based on a pattern, but once we get into this topic today, you're going to see how important it is to really know the pronouns of each stem, and specifically the A stem pronouns, the subjective and objective side. So on this sh um, sheet or on this slide here, you can see that um, you're basically the first few years of language acquisition, you're building a foundation, and then you transition more into speaking. So um, I just want to give you a little context on how that plays out um, on your language journeys. So same thing here. Um, this is just a little snapshot of the language acquisition plan that we have established through the Oneida Language Department. Um, we follow the same topics for the Oneida Language Parent Classes for the Language Nest. Um, so if you scroll through the parent playlist or parent language video playlist on our YouTube, you'll see um, some of our initial videos were from the sound practice, then we went over the stems, and then we went over a few other things. And now we're kind of getting a little farther down. Um, this first video here is going to kind of start our next set of fundamental videos, and those are going to be on verb conjugations. So let's talk about what you're going to learn through this video. You're going to learn about A-STEM word changes, or we also call, call them A-STEM verb changes or A-STEM verb conjugations. It's basically all the same thing. Um, you're going to learn about every change for all tenses of the A-STEM word adlanod. Um, so that includes the subjective or the serial, the past tense, the future tense, the should, could, or would tense, and the objective. So you're going to learn how to speak and pronounce these changes, know the meaning and definition of each, um, learn the patterns associated with the verb changes, including the prefixes, as well as the pronoun patterns. So that is an overview of what you're going to learn. All right, before we get into the A stem verb conjugations, let's go over some review to kind of refresh our minds about what a pronoun is and the pronouns of the A stem subjective and objective side. So, first, the pronoun. What is a pronoun? Hmm, it's a word that replaces a noun. So, it is the subject, it's the subject of a sentence, it's who we're talking about. So, it's she, him, it, me, you us, we, they, or them. Um, it's who we're talking about, basically. That's what a pronoun is. Um, all of our pronouns in the Oneida language, they are all prefixes. So that means it's be, it's be the pronouns are going to be placed before the root, and I'll show you what that really looks like in a little bit. So again, I just wanted to provide a little bit more context about stems, verb conjugations. Um, why are stems important? I used to teach high school and this was always a question. Why are we doing this? Why do we need to learn the stems? Why do we need to know the verb conjugations? Well, if we want to learn how to speak, we need to know how our language functions, how our language is arranged, and that means that we need to learn the stems, the organization of our words or our verbs in Oneida, and how they change. So that means our verb conjugations. So stems are, impo stems are important because um, 
They indicate who the word is referring to, and they help us to understand our words more than rather than just memorizing a word. So a good example is sadi, um, or zadi, I guess you could say too, depending on the pronunciation. But the za or the um, sa in sadi, it means you. Um, so it's indicating who the word is referring to. So if you wanted to say I sit, that's going to use a different pronoun. Um, but if you're saying you sit, as in a command, it's sadi. So that's just a good example. So again, where do stem pronouns go? Stem pronouns are prefixes. It means that they always go on the beginning of a word. Um, what that means is that they, be go, they go on the beginning or before the root. So um, like I mentioned, I'll show you that in a little bit, especially once we look at the roots and the verb conjugations. Um, but it's really important if you see anything highlighted or bolded in this video, in this presentation, it means it's important. Um, so uh, stem pronouns, they are prefixes. Um, they are attached to the root word. Um, they are not used alone, but they are always used with a root. So a good example is this you stem word you learned, ungwehu, um, which means to be Oneida. To say I'm Oneida, you use gu. Gu is the subjective you stem pronoun for me. Gungwehu literally means I'm Oneida. Gu means me, ungwehu means Oneida, and that's the verb, I'm Oneida. So that's a really good example. All right, so I mentioned what we're going to learn about in this video. We're going to learn about the subjective, the past tense, the future tense, the should, could, or would tense, and the objective. That is five sets of verb conjugations. Um, when you learn stems, you learn that there's two sets of pronouns for every stem. There's a subjective side and there's an objective side. I always get the question, what is the difference between the two? Well, they're similar, but they are, so, they are also very different. So the subjective and the objective are both present-like tenses. Um, found in every stem. They follow the same meaning chart that we've mentioned, and I'll go over that shortly again as a review. But the subjective generally represents habitual actions. We often call the subjective the serial. Those two names are interchangeable. Um, so if I wanted to say something like, I'm a teacher, um, it doesn't mean that I'm teaching right now. It means I do it all the time. I teach. Um, I'm a teacher. It's a habitual action. It's something that I am. And so that would be a subjective um, description of that profession that I have if I wanted to say that in Oneida. So that would be the subjective. On the other side, the objective, that generally represents things happening in the moment. So objective is happening in the moment. A good example of that is perhaps a phrase like, it's snowing, it's happening right now. Sometimes the objective can also represent a recent past tense, but please note that there are always special exceptions for the subjective and objective sides. Just know for now that they're present like tenses, um, but they change depending on the root word. There's always special exceptions, and that is basically what you need to know right now about those two. All right, let's get into some review. So let's review the meaning chart. This is really important. This helps to know who we're talking about, especially when we talk about the pronouns. Um, so we use this for everything. We use it for the um, stem pronouns, subjective and objective sides. And we're also going to use it in the verb conjugations because we need to remember who we're talking about, especially when we start focusing on the actual conjugations. But to understand what that means, we're always going to reference back to the meaning chart. Okay, so quick review. The meanings are starting at the in the top left corner. It's me, you, him, her, she, or it. Going to the second column in the top, it's me and you. That can also be a we inclusive. The next one is you too. That is exclusive. The next one is two males, but that can also be a mixed group. So it can be, be a male and a female. And we usually use the pronoun them or they to reference um, 
that set of people. The next one below that is two females. That can also be them. However, whenever you're talking about females, it's always strictly females. Um, and then the last one is me and one other person, but it can also be used as me and someone else. It's like if I was telling you a story about me and Mary going to the store, me and this other person, me and Mary went to the store, but not you. So that's a we exclusive. In the third column, um, starting at the top, it's all of us. That's a we inclusive. Um, so you could say all of us, but sometimes we just say we as well. But it means it's inclusive. It means me and you are included in that statement. Um, the next one is all of you. That's exclusive. As the speaker, I am not included in that. I am telling you all to do something. So like if I'm the teacher, I'm saying, all of you listen. I'm telling everyone to do that. All of you. It's exclusive. The one below that is three or more males. Again, that can be a mixed group. Or And then we also use they or them to reference the subject. Um, below that is three or more females, always strictly females. And then the last one in the column is me and two or more other people. So again, I said if me and Mary are going to the store or me and Mary went to the store, okay, me, Mary, and Joe are going to the store or we went to the store, but not you. I'm telling you this story about, of, about us going to the store. So that is that group of subjects, just to give you an idea of what that means. Um, it can also be a we exclusive, though, so you are not included um, as the listener of me speaking in that conversation. So as you move on through your language journey, those meanings become more easy to understand if you're like, oh, wait, what, what does that mean? Um, don't worry too much about it. Really focus on learning the patterns. So let's go over the patterns for those. So our patterns, you'll notice on this table that there is a giant arrow going across to the right at the top, and there are three arrows going down each column. Let's talk about the columns first. If you look at these subjects in the far most left um, column, that one that says one, the column one, count the subjects in every box. There's only one subject. That's the pattern. That has to do with one person. Let's go to the second column. There's a two listed at the bottom. That if you count up every how, how many subjects are in each box, there's two. So that column has to do with two subjects. And then the last one that says three, that one's on the far right. If you look at all of those subjects, how many are there? Well, there's three or more. So that is the relation, or the relationship between the subjects in the table, in the chart. Um, but let's go across too. So we talked about the patterns down. Let's go across. So let's start with the top row. Um, if you look to the far left, it says inclusive. Um, that's the pattern, me. And then the next one next to it, me and you, all of us. That's inclusive. I am included in every group of subjects in that row. The one below it, let's look at you, you two, you all. That row says exclusive on the far left. That means you, I am excluded. I'm talking about you, you two, you all, or all of you. The third and the fourth row are really, really easy. If you look him, two males, three or more males, it all has to do with males, right? The fourth one, same thing, but instead it's females, her, two females, or three or more females. The last one is other. There really isn't a pattern except the two um, bottom groups of subjects in the uh, column two and three. So we know that the meaning chart is related down by column in the number of subjects and across in rows depending on the theme. All right, so let's talk about a stem tense changes. Um, first, we'll talk about the pronouns. We'll review those. I'll talk about the patterns briefly. I'll talk about that word we learned way back in the day when we um, taught you the um, simple verb changes using azlun, hunji, and ungwehu, or the three races of people. Um, that was a very helpful video because you kind of can see, oh, how do pronouns work with verbs? Where do they go? What, how do they function? What does it mean? Those were simple verb changes, and now we're going to take it a step further. Um, but I'll review those as well, and then we'll get into our stem verb changes. So like I said, 
we are going to use a sample verb and it is the verb highlighted in red. It's udlanod. It means to play or to make music. We're going to learn about the subjective, which we also call the serial. That is one set. We're going to learn the past tense. That is the second set. We're going to learn the future tense. That's the third set. The fourth set is the should, could, or would tense. And then the last set is the objective. So that is what we're going to learn in this video. All right, let's do a quick review of our ASTEM subjective and objective pronouns because this is going to be our base for the entire video. So um, if you're kind of still learning these pronouns, it's going to be a really good idea to practice them because moving on to the next step, these um, are really important to have a really good, strong awareness of each pronoun um, without looking at the book or without looking at the chart so that you can continue to advance your skills. All right, ASTEM subjective and objective pronouns. Let's first start with the subjective side. So I always start in the top left corner and I go down by column and then I go to the second column and I start the next one, third one, top to the bottom. And then I'll do the same with the objective. So um, I don't have a video in a video for this one um, or I, it's hard to have the capability to write on here. If I would, I, um, if I had the ability, I would do that, um, but hopefully, you can follow along as I go through it. So um, let's start with the subjective side. The pronoun for me is ga, za, la, you, wa. Second column, dia, ja, ya, gia, yagya. Third column, dwa, swa, lu, gu, and yagwa. And the objective pronouns, starting with the first one, that's me, and then moving down. So we first have waga, za, lo, yago, yo, or wa. Yungya, ja, lona, yona, yungya, yungwa, swa, lona, yona, yungwa. So let's talk about the patterns. Um, I do not have the slide with the patterns on them, but if you go back and find the A STEM video, um, that video goes over all the patterns extensively. So I'm just going to do a quick review. In that video, you'll also see um, the color coding of the patterns um, for the endings and um, the pronouns that are the same, but I'll do a quick review. So, subjective side, remember our meanings are me, you, him, her, she, or it. So, just like how I go through the pronouns, same thing for the meaning. So, ga is me, za is you, la is him, you is her, wa is she, or it, and so on. So, refer back to the meaning chart. Um, right at this point in time for a video like this, it's assumed that you have a strong foundation in these pronouns and in the meaning chart. So we don't spend as much time going through the patterns just because we're moving on to um, more advanced language skills, language fundamentals, building your acquisition. So, um, but anyway, let's sorry, let's get into the pattern. So, um, ga always k something in um, the subjective side of any stem always has to do with me. S is generally reference you, so we have za. L's reference males, singular males, so that's the first column. Um, you can see that actually both on the subjective and objective side, we have law on the subjective, we have low on the objective. Y's generally reference females, we have you on the subjective, we have yago on the objective. Um, let's go to the second column in the subjective. You'll look at the last two letters of every pronoun in the um, second column. They all have ya. Remember, common endings are very important to know for every stem because everything is based off of that ending. Once you know the patterns, it's very easy to recall the pronouns. So we have ya. Dya, ja, ya, gya, ya, gya. Ya is in every single um, ending in the second column, second column. So that's a second column common ending. That's what we call that. Third column for the subjective, we have dwa, swa, lu, gu, yagwa. Okay, there's three pronouns that have something in common. That's dwa, swa, and yagwa. If you look at the last two letters of those three pronouns, you see wa. That is our third column um, common ending. So it's not in lu or gu. Um, those two generally 
don't have a pattern, but sometimes they kind of go together. I don't really want to call it a pattern because it's not, but sometimes they rhyme. I guess maybe that's just a helpful way to remember it. But just be aware that mm, that doesn't happen in every single stem. Um, but anyway, Dwa, Swan, Yagwa all have that W-A. Let's go to the objective side. A W-A-K, U and plus the letter of the stem. So this is A stem, so you have an A. A lot of the pronouns will end in A, but not all of them, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, so W-A-K plus the letter of the stem. Waga, in this case, for the A stem, that's generally me in the objective side of any stem, okay? So for the C stem, it's wug. For the O stem, it's wuggle. For the U stem, it's wuggle. So you kind of see the pattern there. So even though we're learning 30 pronouns here for the A stem, all those patterns that are found in the pronouns, that translates to every single stem. So at the end of the day, you look back, you take a step back, and you're like, wow, it's all just the same pattern. And you just make small changes accordingly. Um, rather than looking at it as like tons of different pronouns, it's just a pattern. It's a set of patterns in the pronouns of every stem. So, oh, also too, just to mention, what's a stem? What does that mean when I say that? It means a category of our verbs. So a lot, all of our verbs in Oneida adhere to a certain stem. They are a certain verb category. So a stem is one of those verb categories. So we'll, um, oh, sorry. So I'll finish up the patterns of the objective. So if you look at the next one, sorry, I did waga. So the next one is za. S is generally reference you. Um, L's reference males. Oh, yep, we got low. Y's are females on the objective side. First column. I'm looking at the first column. Um, and then usually it's yo or whatever the pronoun is in the subjective um, side for it. So that's wa. So we see, oh, yo or wa. Um, second column objective, we have uh, the whole column is yungya, ja, lona, yona, yungya. Okay, so remember our um, ending pattern for the subjective uh, in the second column? We had ya, yeah, right? Okay, same thing. We're, that, that ending is going to translate to the second column in the objective side. So we have yungya, ja, and yungya. Not all the pronouns, but the top two and then the last one. Also, you'll notice that the top and the bottom... So that meaning, um, the first one, yungya, me and you, is also the same as me and somebody else, also yungya. Okay, um, let's go to the third column, and then I'll talk about um, a couple patterns between columns um, two and three for the objective. So the pronouns in the third column are yungwa, swa, lona, yona, yungwa. Oh, again, let's go back to the third column in the subjective. The ending was wa, common ending of wa translates again to the third column in the objective so always the columns are going to match okay so second column patterns in the subjective are going to be the second um, column patterns in the objective same thing here for the third column wa was the ending in the subjective for the third column wa is going to be the ending um, pattern for the third column in the objective so we have yungwa swa and then a couple down yungwa Again, top and bottom are the same, okay? Let's look between the second and third columns of the objective. We have lona for two males and lona for three or more males. Um, let's look at the females. So yona for two females and yona for three or more females. Ah, same pattern. Two males or three or more males are the same pro pronoun. And then the females, two females or three or more females are also the same. Okay, let's look between both sides. If you look at the whole row, that means you, you two, you all. So on the subjective side, that's za, ja, swa. Let's look on the objective. Oh, we got the same exact patterns. Um, sorry, same exact pronouns. Same thing, that's the pattern. So the pattern is that um, you, you two, you all are the same on both sides. All right, so um, oh, one last thing too. If you look on the subjective side, let's look on the bottom of two and three. You'll see yagya and yung, or sorry, yagya and yagwa. Notice that it's y a k, the first three letters for both of them. Let's look at the objective, bottom of the second and third column. We have yungya and yungwa. The little difference, okay? That's important to know. In the a stem, it's always y a k yug plus the ending. So it's yagya or yagwa, but it changes to yuk in the objective. Now it's yungya 
and Yungwa. So wh what does that even matter for? Well, it's really important because it demonstrates your skills um, and your understanding of the Oneida language. But also it is important because those are the patterns of our stems and those are the patterns of how verbs conjugate and how words change um, in our language. So it's important to know those patterns. They're really slight and they're small. It's not like a bunch of random stuff. Um, really, it's all based on the pattern. So I cannot stress knowing the patterns enough for the pronouns all the time and then knowing the pronouns because honestly everything after that it becomes much easier when you know the pronouns like very very well um, because then you're just going to go um, into more content more advanced content and that that's going to you're going to really have an awareness about how strong your fundamentals are once you start going into that um, next stage of learning Okay, so like I mentioned as well, um, if you want a little bit more of an in-depth review about the ASTEM subjective and objective pronouns and the patterns, go back to the parent video that presented the ASTEM subjective and objective pronouns. That extensively goes over all those patterns much more slowly. Um, it shows you um, some color coding of the patterns. Um, and then some more in-depth review. So I didn't put that on this video just because this video really focuses more on the verb conjugations, but it is important to review them. So um, be sure to take a look at that if you need to. Um, I just wanted to put it in here as a reminder. All right, one more um, little review um, for us is to just briefly go over that word um, you learned when you watched the three races of people um, parent language video. So in that video, you talked about a A stem um, verb, a C stem verb, and a U stem verb. So I'm just going to use the A stem one because that's what we're using today for this video. So that um, verb you learned was atzloon, atzloon. It means to be white, to be Caucasian, um, and a little bit more about that word historically, I guess you could say, azlun, um, it like means to be an axe maker. Um, there's historical reference that has to do with that meaning um, with, um, I guess, our Oneida or Ungwehue perspective on um, our first encounters with um, non-indigenous people, specifically white people, um, and also the uni on the end of azlun, that means to make, um, so it's actually kind of a combined root, which happens on, in Oneida as well, but anyway, that's just a more, that's just some more meaning about the, the verb, so, um, how do we know it's an A stem? Well, we always look at the first letter of the root, so when you look at roots, it's always dash and then a letter. Um, the dash means that something's going to go there. What's going to go there? A pronoun. Pronouns like gaza, la, you, wa. Um, but look at the letter. The first letter is the A. That's going to tell you what your stem is. So this is an A stem. So let's go through those changes. Um, I'll just go through them and then a few meanings. Again, reference the meaning chart. Um, this word you learned, it says first semester. It means like um, like the last six months. Um, <clears throat> but gazlun, zazlun, lazlun, yunzlun, wazlun. Also, there's a whispered ending here. So the ni, like gazluni, it's only if something's after it you would say that I. But if it's just by itself, it's just gazlun. The full word though is gazluni. Let's go to the second column. It's diazlun, jazlun, yazlun, gazlun, yagazlun. And then the third column is dwazlun, swazlun, luzlun, gunzlun, yagazlun. Okay, a couple meanings here. It's important to know the meaning of the verb because you're going to combine that with the meaning of the pronoun. So, azlun just means to be Caucasian, but if you're saying gazlun, ga is me. So, gazluni is I'm white, basically, or I'm Caucasian. Um, zazlun, you're white, you're Caucasian. Zazluni, ga, are you white? I guess you could say it like that, too. Again, these are just for educational purposes, so... Um, it's just important to know that when I'm talking about a verb like this. So, um, Lazlun, he's white, he's Caucasian. Yuzlun, 
you know, Zulani, she's white, she's Caucasian. So um, you kind of get the gist of it. Um, also, too, pronouns. The pronoun is ga. And then if we look at the root, the root starts with an A. So what happens to that second A? Um, well, ga, K-A, the pronoun for me, replaces the first letter. Okay, so it's only one. It's just the pronoun. The pronoun replaces the first letter of the root for vowel stem pronouns. That's the rule. I'll talk about that a little bit more shortly. Um, but if you look, ga, the K-A, that's the pronoun. So um, let's go to the next slide so uh, you can see how that actually works with the color coding system. Um, it kind of helps you to identify the pronouns and then how that works with the root. All right, so um, I kind of touched on this with the last slide, but now um, this slide, I want to just really show you what that looks like. So our pronouns, that was our a uh, couple slides ago, gaza la yu wa, dia ja ya gya ya gya, dwa swa lu go ya gwa. Okay, it's kind of like a song. But um, the pronoun is in front of the root. Okay, that means when we said pronouns are prefixes, it means that they're before the root. That dash it means that that's where the pronoun is going. So the last thing I just touched on too is that for vowel stem pronouns, A is a vowel, E, I, O, U, and the caret in our language. We have six vowels. For vowel stem pronouns, the pronoun replaces the first letter. The pronoun replaces that A. The pronoun replaces the A in Atzlun. So I just want you to know that so that you're not thinking it's a double A. It's not. Um, because when you get to... Pro to when you get to pronouns like you, she, or her, why you, why you replaces the A, okay? Same thing for three or more males or three or more females. Lu replaces the A. Gu replaces the A. So you have lun, zlun, gu, zlun, and so on, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. The pronoun replaces the first letter of the root. Ga replaces the A in atzlun. So together you come up with so that is the full thing. But I like showing this one so you can see the color coding of the pronouns. Obviously, this is not really how you see Oneida, but for learning purposes, it's really important to highlight the pronouns um, as you're starting to learn um, verb conjugations. All right, so let's get into it. The first root word we're going to work with in the Oneida language is an A stem, subjective word or verb. It means that the tenses of the past feature, should, could, or would tense will all use subjective pronouns um, in conjunction with the prefix of that tense. So we're going to talk about what that means a little bit more shortly because I want you to see it. Um, and then you're going to learn the five tense changes breakdown. Um, but I just want to sit, highlight that this verb we're learning is a subjective verb. So like I said, that means that the past, the future, the should, could, or would, they are going to use subjective pronouns, okay? We do have objective verbs that use objective pronouns in those tenses, but we are not learning those yet at this time. Those take on a different patterning system because Oneida is super cool like that, and there's so many different awesome patterns for all different verbs. So, um... As the teacher, I am um, required to make this exciting. So, <laughs> um, so hopefully you're enjoying this. <laughs> Especially, I know this is, can be such a dry topic sometimes. So, I do my best with teaching this. So, um, let's get into a little bit more about what that means. All right. So I said we're learning five sets of changes today. Okay you'll see color coding on this slide as well. Subjective is its own color. The past, future, should, could, or would are the same color, and the objective is its own color. That's going to be really important because when we learn these verb conjugations, there's going to be specific endings that are associated with each of those sets. So the subjective will have its own ending, the past, future, and the should, could, or would tense will have its own ending, and the objective will have its own ending. 
All right. Um, but like I mentioned in the last slide, this is a subjective verb that we're going to learn. So if you look at two, three, and four, the past, future, should, could, or would tense, look to the right. The past, future, should, could, or would tense will have the same ending. They're going to use different prefixes, but this is a subjective verb, so that means we're using subjective pronouns. Okay, so what pronouns are we using? The subjective, back to number one, the subjective is going to use subjective pronouns. Number two, the past tense is going to use subjective pronouns. Number three, the future tense is going to use subjective pronouns. Number four, the should, could, or would tense is also going to use subjective pronouns. And number five, that's the objective. That's going to use objective pronouns, okay? So when we think about the subjective, it's a present-like tense. Um, it can be representing things happening all the time. The past tense, it's something that did happen. The future, sen future tense is something that will happen. The should, could, or would tense is something that should, could, or would happen. And then the objective is happening right now. So, as promised, let's get into this root verb and the changes. All right, our verb that we're going to look at here is udlanode. So if you look in the box, it's highlighted in red. The first letter it starts with is an A, so it's A stem. We notice that there's two dashes on each side of the root. So when we look at a root, um, it is always in the infinitive form. So we never use verb roots by themselves. They don't exist like that. How do they exist? They exist in a verb conjugation, so we have to use it in its conjugated form when we're speaking. So it just naturally occurs, like when you hear a story and stuff, but when you're learning Oneida, when you're like a second language learner, it's really important to understand how the language is, how it functions, how it's arranged, so that you can um, really have a good grasp on the understanding of things. Um, so the meaning of Adlanod, it means to play it or make music. That's a really good meaning. Um, this is actually a really common word we use in Oneida. Um, but it's also good to ha make some observations and see what, what is that root verb? What letter does it start with? What do those dashes mean? Um, what is the meaning? What is the stem? Um, so this slide, I just want to get you thinking about thinking about those things. All right, so um, important to remember, um, in vowel stems, which the A stem is a vowel stem, the stem pronoun replaces the beginning vowel letter of the matching stem or the matching root word. So I showed you that, um, how the pronoun um, in the A stem, for me, ga replaces the A in atzlun. We use that atzluni. Um, to be Caucasian or white, sample verb um, to demonstrate how the pronoun replaces the first letter. So this includes the A, um, the O, the U, the E, and the carrot, um, and also the I, um, but it doesn't include the C stem. So today we're going over um, the A stem, but in later videos, we'll go over verb, sample verb changes for the other stems as well. So, um, also, it's important to note that stem pronouns must match the same stem root verb or root word. Um, this applies to any stem. So, for example, A stem pronouns, subjective or objective, only go with A stem root words. You cannot use C stem pronouns on an A stem root word. It has to match A stem pronouns with A stem verbs. Okay? Um, so let's move on and get into the conjugations. Okay, so let's first go over the subjective. So this is also called the serial. The, the root verb is udlanod, so you see at the top it's a dash t l caret n o t dash okay the two dashes on the front and the end of the root means that something is going to go where that dash is and then something's going to go on the end so what's going to go at the beginning that's the pronoun 
what's going to go at the end is the ending, okay? Pay attention to the pronouns and then also what you see at the end of the verb or the ending. Um, so just a reminder as well that this verb, adlanod, means to play or to make music. For this slide only, I'm just going to go through the pronunciations. The next slides, I'm going to highlight the pronouns and the patterns, okay? So the first one, I will start always in the top left corner. I will go down in the first column, then I'll go and start at the top of the second column, go down, and then the top of the third column and go down. So that's basically the pattern I do for all pronunciation or verb conjugations going over those patterns. So let's go and get started. So gadlanot um, is the word with the whispered ending. The full word is gadlanota. So remember we talked about whispered endings before. Um, if something is after gadlanota, then you're going to say the ta. If it's just by itself, gadlanot, you can also say that by itself. It's just gadlanot, okay? But it's important to know both. So gadlanot and gadlanota. The rest of them, I'm just going to do uh, the pronunciation with the whispered ending. So I'm not going to say the H-A, okay? So um, I'll start at the top again. Gadlanot, gadlanota, zadlanot, ladlanot, yundlanot, wadlanot, diadlanot, Jadlanot, Yadlanot, Gyadlanot, Yagyadlanot, Dwadlanot, Swadlanot, Lundlanot, Gundlanot, and Yagwadlanot. Okay, so let's get into the pronouns, the patterns, and the meanings. All right, so on this slide, I always keep the root at the top and the meaning. Remember, we're still talking about the subjective. We're learning five sets of conjugations today. This is the first set. It's called the subjective. We also call it the serial. Sometimes if you hear me say uh, the serial, it means the subjective as well. So to play or to make music, uh, remember the subjective is called the serial because sometimes it can mean something that's happening all the time or consistently. Um, as language learners, sometimes we call this the serial killer because it's like happening all the time. It just is a way to help us remember what the subjective represents um, in terms of meanings, okay? So um, on this slide, you can see a bunch of color coding. This is really important because the red, if you look at the top, there's a key. Um, above the chart, it says subjective pronouns, root word, and serial ending. So subjective pronouns, it's in red. Those are all the pronouns at the beginning of the word, and they are, high, they are um, written in red. The next part is the root word, okay? But remember that um, the beginning, um, the first letter, and the last letter of the root is shared between the pronoun and then also the ending. So it's the same, but it is essentially shared. So you don't have to worry too much about what that means, but just know that essentially the root word is in black, but that the first and the last letter are shared with the pronoun and the ending. Okay? Um, and then what's highlighted in blue is the serial ending, which is ta, T-H-A. Generally, the ending always includes the last letter of the root. So in this root, um, the last letter is T. So T is part of the root, but it's also the first letter of the ending, okay? So that helps you to remember um, how endings fun function in our language. Once you start learning more verbs, you'll pick up um, ending patterns really easily um, in a predictable way. Um, a lot of verbs in Oneida, they just make changes um, based on the patterns we have. The whole language is based off of patterns. So once you learn the pattern, um, and maybe other verbs that might have the same ending patterns, you can apply that to new verbs pretty easily. Um, so generally, also too, root verbs generally always end with a consonant. So in adlanot, the consonant is T. So that's important to remember too. It's just, there's just lots of little things here and there when you're learning verb conjugations. Um, but anyway, back to the table. So sometimes I add those extra points in. They're just helpful, but... What the main thing I want you to know is what's in this chart of 15 verb conjugations. So there's 15 conjugations per chart or per um, tense, I guess you could say. Um, so this one is the subjective. So it's a present like tense. Okay, so you see gaza la yu wa, those are all highlighted in red. Diaja yagya yagya, dwaswa lugu yagwa. Now, just this is really obvious, but those are subjective pronouns, and this is the subjective set. So you have to use subjective pronouns 
with the subjective for subjective verbs, okay? The ending for this verb, for the serial or the subjective is ta, gadlanot, gadlanota. Okay, so those are some of the ending patterns, a little bit more specifically using a color-coded system. Um, and I think we'll move on to the next one. All right, so this chart has all the meanings because it is important to know what we're talking about um, as language learners. So um, the top in red of the chart has the verb, the verb conjugations, gudlanot, gudlanota. So remember, ga is me, udlanot has to do with play or making music, and ta is an indicator that this is the subjective or the serial, and so that means that it's happening all the time, or it can be happening in the moment. So, for this verb, it means happening all the time. Gudlanot or gudlanota literally means I'm a musician, or I play music, or I play an instrument. Um, or it can also mean I make music. So sometimes um, as a, like a language learner, you're like, wow, that's a lot of meanings for one verb. That is very common um, in Oneida. Um, our language is very descriptive, but it can have different meanings depending on how it's used and depending on the context. So if I said gudla note, um, it can mean I'm, I'm a musician or I play an instrument or I make music. Um, it's kind of like that teacher reference I was telling you about. I'm a teacher versus I'm teaching. Those are two different types of statements, and that's a really good example of like the difference between the subjective and objective side. So like a subjective statement would be I'm a teacher, um, an objective statement using the patterns of our language, how I mentioned what the objective stands for. I'm teaching. I'm doing it right now. Um, so that is what applies for this verb here in the subjective. Zedlanot means you're a musician. Um, I have alternative definitions or meanings of that, that word underneath as well. So you can read those on the screen. I'll just read the first one underneath it. Ledlanot, he's a musician. Yundlanot, she's a musician. This is like a younger female. Wadlanot, um, it's a musician. Or an older, she is a musician. So, um... It's really important to know the meaning chart because now we're using verb conjugations, so we got to know who we're talking about. And it's really important to know the pronouns because now we're taking it a step further to conjugating verbs, so the pronouns have to be pretty solid. Um, just one quick note about that last one in the first column, Wadla note. That's also used um, actually for the word for radio. It means um, it plays music. That's how we use it in that sense. And so Wadla note, Wadla nota literally is like the word for radio. Um, second column, Diadla note is me and you are musicians or we're musicians. We are musicians. Diadla note, you two are musicians. Yadla note, they are musicians or the two males or it could be a mixed group. Yedlanot is they are musicians, two females, strictly females. Yagyedlanot, me and someone are musicians. Um, we, uh, me and this other person are a musician. Dwedlanot, all of us are musicians. Swedlanot, you are mus you all are musicians. Lundlanot, they are musicians, three or more males or a mixed group. Glundlanot, um, they are musicians, three or more males, strictly females always. Um, and then Yagwedlanot, me and two or more others are musicians. We are musicians, but it's a we exclusive. All right, now let's go on to the past tense. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just go over and present to you all of the verb conjugations for the past tense. Okay, um, so the past tense Pay attention to what you see here, where the pronouns are, and it looks like we have a new ending. So making those observations um, in your head are really helpful as I go through all of the verb conjugations for the past tense. So there's always 15 sets of conjugations. We have 15 meanings, 15 pronouns, so there's 15 conjugations, okay? Um, just a quick note too, the last um, letter in the, each conjugation has a caret. It's supposed to be a caret accent, but it's hard to add that on a, uh, like a PowerPoint presentation. So um, just be aware of that. It's not like a big deal. It's just FYI. So I'll go through each um, conjugation. The first one I'll do 
um, whispered ending, full word, and then the re rest will all be just with the whispered ending, okay? So the first one, starting from top left, first column, all the way down, second column down, third column down, um, will be as follows. So, what gudlanod, what gudlanod, da? Wah sadlanod, wah hadlanod, wah undlanod, undlanod, we diadlanod, we jadlanod, wah yadlanod, wah giadlanod, wah agiadlanod, we dwadlanod, we swadlanod, wah hundlanod, wah gundlanod, and wah agwadlanod. So let's go over the patterns for the past tense, changes to the pronouns, endings, and we'll talk about the meanings. All right, so let's go over past tense prefixes, pronouns, and endings. So more color coding here because I want you to see the breakdown of how these words um, or how these conjugations literally appear as one full word, but I want you to see each piece, what each piece represents, and putting all of that together, okay? So it's really important because um, that's how we acquire our language. So in the subjective, you just have a pronoun, the root and the ending. In the past tense, the future tense, and the should, could, or would tense, those are like related tenses. They are all different and they have different meanings. However, they all share the same ending. So that ending is da, T caret. That's really important because anytime you ever make a verb conjugation in any stem with any verb in Oneida, the past tense, the future tense, and the should, could, or would tense will always, always, always have the same exact ending, okay? And these are for simple verb changes for the past, future, should, could, or would. Now, if you have, um, if you know more about Oneida, you'll know that sometimes we have like habitual past tenses. Those are more advanced conjugations and those are gonna have different endings, but for a basic set of 75 conjugations for any verb, that includes a past, future, and a should, could, or would tense, they will always, always, always have the same ending. So remember that. It's really important. You're going to see that in the next tense and then the following tense right after that. Okay? Um, so the first thing, past tense, pronoun prefix. Oh, it looks like there's something else on this here. Well, that is highlighted in pink. So another thing that's really important to remember with the tenses, the three related tenses, the past, future, and should, could, or would, they all have a unique prefix before the pronoun that represents that tense. So for the past tense, it is always represented by a wa, w-a, or a we, w-e, or some form of that. There's always a w-a or w-e before the pronoun. That represents something that happened, something that you did um, or had done. That is a past tense prefix. That's what we call that. Okay, then you see the pronoun that's highlighted in red. Then you see the root word that's kind of the same of what we've seen in the subjective that's in black. Remember the first letter of the root and the last letter is a part of the pronoun as well as the ending. And then the past tense ending is highlighted in blue. So for the past tense for this verb is done. Okay, one thing that's important to note um, is that these endings, these are only for this verb, adlanot. Every verb has its own set of endings for the subjective, past, future, should, could, or would, and the objective. So sometimes that might seem like a lot, but um, the more you practice, the more you review, the more you study, um, the easier it is to identify the patterns, and then the easier it is to use those skills to predict how verbs might conjugate when you learn new verbs. So those are just like really helpful skills. Um, we talked about observing, making observations about words, thinking about things, using um, the skills that you've acquired about your knowledge of the A stem, the pronouns and the patterns to help you to identify and see those things when you see words. Um, and there was one other thing I was going to mention. Um, but yeah, those are really important skills. So um Let's go through um, a little bit more in depth about these prefix patterns, okay? Um, you'll notice that something happens to a few of these pronouns here. So I'm going to talk about that um, shortly as well because some pronouns make changes in the past tense.
Okay, so A stem past tense characteristics for subjective verbs. The past tense will have additional prefixes to the pronouns um, for the root word. So this is a prefix. Essentially, we call it a prefix to the prefix. Um, the past tense is typically identified with a wa or a way. I mentioned that in the last slide. The past tense ending for this verb only is da. Okay, so basically, how do we put our words together? You can see it with this little equation type of thing highlighted in red. It's the past tense prefix plus your pronoun plus your root word plus your past tense ending and then you get your past tense word change or your past tense conjugation. So um, just remember that every verb has its own set of endings. This is strictly just for this word ad lino. Okay, so a stem past tense prefixes are wa, wa glottal um, for me. For you, it's wa, w a h, and then it's just wa for him, w a glottal for her. Um, there is no prefix for is she or it. Um, in the second column, it's w e drag, way, same thing for you too. For two males, it's wa with the h, and then the following the bottom two, two females, and me and someone else, it's wa, w a glottal. Um, top of the third, it's w e drag for all of us and all of you. For three or more males, it's wa, and then for the last two, Three or more females, or me and two others, um, it's WA glottal. So look at this set um, of prefixes. Do you see any patterns? What are the patterns that you see? Think about that because that's what we're going to talk about next. Okay, I've highlighted the patterns here for you on this slide. You'll notice there is four um, past tense prefixes that are highlighted in green in the top corner of our chart. Um, I call that like this little postage stamp pattern, okay? Um, this WE drag occurs in the second column for the first two meanings. Um, and then in the third column for the first two as well. So it's WE drag for me and you, WE drag for you too, WE drag for all of us, and WE drag for all of you, as well as this purple pattern, okay? It's WA glottal for her, two females, and three or more females. Um, and then right at the bottom, in the bottom row in the second, third column, there's also a pattern that's highlighted in blue there. Okay, that's WA glottal. Now, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is a lot of patterns, how am I going to remember this? Practice. Practice, study, um, review, listen to audios that go over these conjugations, record yourself making the conjugations, read through the charts and record yourself, listen to them back. You're going to pick up those patterns really quickly. Um, it's not like that big of a deal, but it is really important once you start having a really strong foundation um, and acquiring, advancing your skills as a language learner. And um, if you teach it, it's really important to also have a really strong awareness about that. So um, I know sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, this is a lot. I have to learn the pronouns. I have to learn endings, verbs, um, and prefixes. Um, yes, it does seem like a lot. However, everything is based on a pattern. If you learn the pattern, everything else is much easier to acquire. Um, learning it through the patterns, the brain loves patterns. So um, train your brain to pick up those patterns, and that will really help you in the long run. So now, like just being myself as an immersion instructor, I can pick up verbs fast because I have a really strong foundation in how verbs are conjugated, and I just do it in my head. So uh, if you're starting to learn these initially, I said record, listen to them. Also write them down, write them out. That is really helpful. Like rewrite them and keep doing it. Check the book. Check your books that you have. Is that the right one? Where did you make the error? And then just keep going back and correcting that. That's one way that's going to help you um, really fine tune those skills. All right. So let's go into some of the changes that happen to the pronouns in the past tense.
All right, so I'm taking this in baby steps. So I presented all the conjugations to you. Then I went over the past tense prefixes and then the patterns of the prefixes. And I'm gonna go over the past tense, um, the changes that happen to the pronouns. So not all of them go through changes, but some of them do. And these are really important because we're gonna see this in every tense and we're also gonna see it in every stem and pretty much in every verb. Um, and so this video is a very thorough overview of how verbs conjugate. Once you pick up these patterns, it just is really easy and really fast to conjugate something. So you'll see a little table off to the left that says past tense prefixes. We already talked about those, but let's focus on this one on the right. It says past tense pronouns. So all of these pronouns, again, this is an A stem verb. We're using A stem pronouns. What kind of pronouns are we using? Subjective or objective? I mentioned that this is a subjective verb, so we're using subjective pronouns, okay? However, some pronouns go through changes in conjugations. So that means if something is before these pronouns, like a past tense prefix, um, they're gonna change a little bit. It doesn't mean that they're any different, it just means they make natural changes according to how the verbs conjugate, okay? So, specifically, you'll see the ones that have a little extra wordage um, in the box. So, ganza don't change, but la, you, and wa do. So, l's um, in Oneida generally change to h's. So, la will actually change to ha. That's why we have wahudlanod, okay? Um, y's in Oneida generally, generally, okay? There's always, like, exceptions here and there, um, drop off, okay? So... For you, why you, it's just going to be you. Um, she played or she made music. Um, and then we also have wa. Um, for a stem um, verbs in the past tense only, um, the pronoun changes to you, okay? This is the only stem that this happens in, and it's a little weird because we're like, where's the prefix and where's the pronoun? There actually is no prefix, only for that last one in the first column for um, an older she or it, and the pronoun wa changes to a you. It's mainly because you can't have a wa and a wa together. It's just kind of a, um, an Oneida language, um, like grammar rule, I guess you could say. Um, that can't happen, so you'll see that noted in red. Second column, diaja, ya, and gya are always the same, but yagya, y's drop off. Yagya starts with a y, that y is going to drop off, um, specifically here. So it doesn't happen just for ya, because the prefix for two males is wah, so there is no um, dropping of the y for that one, but there is for me and someone, and then in the third column, that last one as well, me and two or more others. Okay, let's go to the third column. Dwa, swa, lu, gu, yagwa. Dwa and swa do not change. Lu, the L is going to change to an H there. Um, in the past tense, gu does not change. Yagwa, the Y drops off and it becomes agwa. Okay, um, let's move on to the meanings. Right, so we talked about the words, we talked about the past tense prefixes, the prefix patterns, the pronouns and the changes to the pronouns, and now we're going to talk about meanings, okay? So we have what god lenode, I played music. You see that past tense going on in that meaning. What god lenode, I played music, I made music, it can mean that too. Um, Wasudlanod, you played music. Wahudlanod, he played music. Waundlanod, she played music like a younger female. <coughs> Undlanod, it played music, um, or it could mean an older she played music as well. Depends on the context. Wadiadlanod, me and you played music, or we played music. It's ex it's inclusive and it only means two people, me and you. Wajedlanod, you two played music. Wahiedlanod, they played music, two more males. Wahiedlanod, they played music, two more females. Um, so really, you wouldn't say like. The two females played music. You would probably just say they. But who is it talking about if you heard what Gedlanod? It means like two females, okay? Um, so I just put that in parentheses so you know who is being talked about. It's assumed it's a part of the context of how Oneida language functions. So um, the last one in the second column, what a Gedlanod, me and someone played music. We played music. It's like an exclusive we. We Dwedlanod, all of us played music. We played music. It's inclusive. We Swedlanod, you all played music. Wa Hundlanod, they played music through our males or mixed group. What Gundlanod, they played music three or more three three or more females, always strictly females. What a Gwadlanod. 
Uh, me and two of our others played music. All right, we learned about the past tense. Let's go to the future. All right, let's go over the future tense for Udlanode. So it means to play or to make music. Check out these conjugations. What do you see? Do you see the pronouns? What's before the pronouns? What kind of ending does it have? Make those observations um, while I go through and present the pronunciations of this entire chart for you. Starting at the top, going down to the first column, top down to the second column, and then the same for the third. Um, I'll go through every single one. So first one all the way through, and then the whispered ending. The rest will always just be the with, with the whispered ending. Um, so the first one, on God le node, full word is on God le node. Huh? The next one, on sad le node, on had le node, on yund le node, on wad le node, on diad le node, on jad le node, on hiad le node, on giad le node, on ya giad le node, on dwad le node, on swad le node, on hund le node, on gund le node, on ya gwad le node. All right, let's talk about the prefixes, pronouns, and some patterns next. Okay, so future tense always has a prefix as well. It has its own prefix. So in the past tense, we had wa or way as the past tense prefix. For the future, it is always, always, always a caret. Um, a caret represents the future tense and verb conjugations. It means something that will happen. Um, so in this chart, you'll see that the future tense pronoun prefix is highlighted in pink. Subjective pronouns or the pronouns are highlighted in red. The root word is in black. And the ending pattern is da. So we mentioned that past, future, and shukr wood tenses, those are three related tenses. They're always grouped together. Even though they are separate, they have different meanings, different patterns. They have the same ending. So we see da again. Okay. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Let's talk about the um, future tense prefix patterns, and then we'll talk about changes to the pronouns, and then I'll go over the meanings. All right, for Udlanot, the future tense will utilize future tense prefixes before the pronouns and the pronouns and the root word ending. So basically, how do we put our future tense together? We have a future tense prefix, our pronoun, our root word, plus our ending, our future tense suffix or our ending. A suffix just means an ending. Um, that's how we get our future tense word change or our future tense conjugation. So, um... Future tense prefixes, you can see those on the left side in that little chart. Um, pretty much it's always just a carrot. Um, however, in that meaning you, the second one in the first column, and then the third one in the second column, the two males, that is carrot H. It's not like a big thing. It's just more for pronunciation purposes. Um, it's oh, uh, that's basically the sound instead of oh. Uh. Okay, um, future tense pronouns and the changes to the pronouns. It's not really many changes to any of the pronouns in the future tense except the pronouns that start with an L. So that would be him um, or the pronoun la. That L is going to change to an H, so it's going to be ha. Oh, hadlanod. You can hear that in that conjugation. And then lu, um, three or more males. So that L is going to change to an H. It's going to be hu. And then the whole conjugation sounds like oh, hadlanod. They will make music. All right, so I would say overall, generally, the future tense is pretty easy to learn. Basically, it's carrot plus your pronoun. Just be mindful that there's a couple um, future tense prefixes that have a carrot H and then a couple pronouns that make just a few changes. Basically, it's just that the L's change to H's. So just be mindful. That's generally the pattern for conjugations is L's change to H's and Y's drop off. Generally, only for the past, future, and shukut or wood tenses, depending on the tense, though. Okay, um, let's go over the meanings.
All right, so future tense meanings. On Gadlanod, I will play music. On Sadlanod, you will play music. On Hadlanod, he will play music. On Yundlanod, she will play music. On Wadlanod, it will play music. On Diadlanod, me and you, we will play music. On Jadlanod, you two will play music. On Hyadlanod, they will play music. Who? Two males. On Gyadlanod, they will play music. Who? Two females. On uh, Gyadlanod, me and someone will play music. You can also say we will play music. It's just assume that you're talking about a we exclusive. On um, Dwadlanod, that's all of us. We will play music. On Swadlanod, you all will play music. On Hondlanod, they will play music. That's the three or more males. On Gudlanod, they will play music. That's the three or more females, strictly females. And then the last one, on Yagwadlanod, me and two or more others will play music. Okay? Um, so that's the future tense. Um, the next one we're going to go to and through is the Shugkutter Wood tense. So let's go through that one. All right, I will present all of the um, verb conjugations for the should, could, or would tense for udlanot, which means, again, to play or to make music. Um, pay attention to what you see um, in terms, in the conjugations. Um, do you see prefixes? Do you see the pronouns? What's happening to the pronouns? Are there patterns in the prefixes that you notice? What is the ending? Um, can you guess the meanings? Think about those things as I go through the pronunciation. If you want, you can say the pronunciation after me as well. Um, and then we'll talk about some patterns, prefix patterns, pronouns, and then endings as well. Okay? Um, oh, so should, could, or would tense. It, basically, we call it that tense because it means you should, could, or would do something. Um, if it's used, um, this is an, it's not always a common tense that's used. However, you can use it with a second verb or a, another verb. The two verbs can be used together. Like, I want to eat. Those are two verbs together. Um, when you say a statement like that, your second verb is always going to be in the should, could, or would tense. Um, when it's used in that way, it represents the infinitive. Your statement changes to to be doing something. Okay, so that's kind of why this um, tense is important. But you do still use it a lot. Like, zadikun um, is like eat, um, the command to eat. But I could say, asadikun, like you should eat. So you can say that too. Those are um, helpful statements. All right, anyway, so back to the pronunciation. I'll start with the first one. Agadlanod, agadlanod, da is the full word. Asadlanod, ahadlanod, ayundlanod, aundlanod. Aidiadlanod, Aijadlanod, Ahyadlanod, Agyadlanod, Ayagyadlanod, Aidwadlanod, Aiswadlanod, Ahundlanod, Agundlanod, and Ayagwadlanod. All right, let's talk about some patterns. All right, patterns, 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 okay? Udla note, we're talking about should, could, or would, tense, prefixes, pronouns, and endings here, okay? Should, could, or would, tense, pronoun, prefix, that is highlighted in pink. You'll know, notice that there is a lot of A's. That is the should, could, or would, tense, prefix. So an A or an A-E drag or sometimes an A-H represents the should, could, or would, tense, prefix, okay? It's usually some variation of an A, Okay, but just notice that when you see that A, ah, okay, that's the should, could, or would tense. It's helpful to know that, helpful to hear that, helpful to see it. Okay, the next one is, that's highlighted is the red. That's the, the pronouns. Um, notice, see if you can notice any changes that happen to the pronouns in this tense. Um, the black is the root word. The blue is the ending. Oh, same ending again as the past tense and the future tense. Remember? Past, future, should, could, or would, they all share the same ending. They have different prefixes, and some of them do make different changes to the pronouns, but if there's one thing they have in common, it is always the same ending. Remember, that's like a cluster of three. It's like the three sisters, past, future, should, could, or would tense. They are always together. They are different. They um, do have different meanings and different patterns, but um, they have the same ending. Okay, They have something in common, and that's the ending. Um, now let's go specifically into the should, could, or would um, tense prefix patterns, and then we'll talk about the pronouns. All 
All right, so I mentioned that in A, the sugar wood tense, you'll notice the statement in purple here, sugar wood tense is identified with an A prefix. It's always a variation of an A. So you'll notice the first one is A, the second one is AH, the rest in the first column are all A's. We notice an AE drag in that postage stamp corner, very similar to how we've seen it in the past tense. That's important to know because that E drag happens in the same spots in the past tense that it happens in the same spots in the sugar wood tense. So just remember that. Now instead of being a WE drag, it's not the past tense, it's an AE drag, okay? But it's in the same spots. So just be aware of that. Um, two males is an AH. We've noticed in the past feature and sure to cutter wood, it's always whatever that prefix is plus an H. So same thing here. Remember in the past tense it was wa. In the future it was on. In the um, should cutter wood tense, it's ah, it's AH, okay? The rest of the second column for two male, two females or me and someone else, it's A. And then for the third column, the bottom three are also A. All right, let's go over changes to the pronouns. All right, changes to the pronouns are pretty cut and dry. You can read um, any of the top information on the slides here as well. Um, I basically just go over the main content. So I'm looking at the charts here. Um, I went over the sugar wood tense prefixes in that little table on the left. I just want you to see that you're using your prefix plus your pronoun plus your root word plus your ending. That's going to give you your conjugation, okay? Um, but let's focus on this larger chart here on the right side, should cut or would tense pronouns. Basically, all the pronouns stay the same, except, again, L's change to H's. And then the last one um, in the first column, that wa, remember that pronoun was wa um, for sheer it, um, in the should cut or would tense, just like, remember how we've seen that in the past tense for that one spot? Same thing. You'll notice that the past tense and the sugar or wood tense, those two of three, have a little bit more in common than the future tense. They share even more patterns between those two tenses, okay? So another little kind of, I don't know, um, factoid, I guess, <laughs> that you can lock away in your brain about how what uh, verb conjugations are or how they function in Oneida. So anyway, wa will change to a u in the sugar or wood tense only for an older she or it that is the bottom 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 pronoun in the, in the bottom of the first column okay um and i think that's pretty much it everything else stays the same it's just those three spots let's go over the meanings All right, so I will go over the word and I'll give you the meaning and then I'll just talk about a few notes here and there after that. A good linode means I should, could, or would play music. Um, if you notice, this is called the should, could, or would tense. Usually I just call it SCW. It just means should, could, or would. Um, in the first one, I just put all three of those options in there because it can mean I should play music. It can mean I could play music. It can also mean I would play music. For the rest of them, though, I just use should, but just know that it can also mean could or would as well. Okay? So, a good linode means I should, could, or would play music. A sud linode, you should play music, or you could play music, or you would play music. A hud linode, he should play music, or he should make music. You could say that too. A yund linode, she should play music. A und linode, it should play music. A yed linode, me and you should play music. A jed linode, you two should play music. A yed linode, they should play music, the two males. A gied linode, they should play music, the females. A ye gied linode, me and someone should play music. A dwed linode, all of us should play music. A swed linode, you all should play music. A hund linode, they should play music. A gund linode, they should play music, the females. A ye gwed linode, me and two or my others should play music. And that is the should cut or wood tense. Our last one is the objective. So let's go through that.
All right, the end is near. Um, this is our last set of verb conjugations for ad linoat. So we, after this one, we've gone through 75 conjugations of just this one verb, ad linoat. Um, so first, I'm just going to present them to you. What do you see? What are the pronouns? What's the ending? Make notes of those things. Wagadla node is the first one. Or wagadla not, zadla not, zadla node, lodla not, yugodla not, wadla not. Yungyadla not, jadla not, lonadla not, yonadla not, yungyadla not, yungwadla not, swadla not, lonadla not, yonadla not, and yungwadla not. Let's go over patterns. What do we see? Let's talk about our observations of the objective and the meanings. All right, remember I said that the objective is also a present like tense. So, because the subjective and the objectives are present like tenses, we don't have any tense prefixes like the past feature should, could, or would, okay? So, in the subjective, it's just the pronoun. In the objective, it's just the pronoun. But, what kind of pronouns are we using? In the subjective, we're using subjective pronouns for this verb. In the objective, we're using objective pronouns okay so these are actually really simple changes but sometimes because people like um have been using the subjective pronouns like for a verb like this since it's a subjective verb that just means that the past future should could or would use subjective pronouns in those changes we forget like oh yeah we got the objective now we gotta use objective pronouns so that's what this is um so the first uh, color coding uh, table here, the first part in red, that's actually your objective pronoun. Um, the one in the portion in black, that's the root. And then the ending is the objective tense ending. The objective has its own ending, and that's day. Okay, if you can recall, the subjective had its own ending. The past future could, should, could, or would um share the same ending, and then the objective has its own ending. So how many endings total is that? It is only three. There's only three um, different endings in this set of verb conjugations, okay? So although there are 75 total verb conjugations, there's only three different endings, and it's dependent on what, um, what uh, tense or what set of the conjugations you're talking about, okay? So you can see all of these um, sectioned out. Now let's briefly review our objective pronouns and let's talk a little bit more about the patterns, the meanings, and the endings. Okay, so we mentioned we're using objective pronouns here. Remember, those objective pronouns for the A stem are waga, za, lo, yago, um, yo or wa. For this verb, it's going to use wa. Um, yungya, ja, lona, yona, yungya, yungwa, spa, lona, yona, yungwa. So you can see that that is before the root in the verb. In the objective, the ending is de, okay? Um, so wagadla no, wagadla no de, that's the full word. Um, I'm playing music. This is happening right now. So the subjective side, it's like the habitual meaning. I'm a musician or I play music. If I say I play music, it doesn't mean I'm playing music. It just means like I play music. I make music. Maybe I'm like a composer or something. Um, or maybe I'm a DJ. I play music. Um, like I could say like I teach, but it doesn't mean I'm teaching right now, right? So that's the difference. I just want you to know that they're very slight, but they are different. Um, so for the subjective, it's a habitual ending or a habitual meaning happening all the time. I'm a musician or I make music. And then the objective for this verb specifically, it's happening right now. Wagadla not, I'm playing music. Zadla not, you're playing music. Lodla not, he's playing music. Um, she's play, she plays music, or he plays music, you could say that too. Yegodla not, she's playing music. Wadla not, it's playing music. Yungyadla not, me and you are playing music. Jadla not, you two are playing music. Lonadla not, they're playing music. Yonadla not, um, the two females are playing music. Yungyadla not, um, me and someone are playing music. Yungwadla not, all of us are playing music. Swadla not, um, 
you all are playing music, Lonad la note, um, they're playing music, Yonad la note, they're playing music, the females, Yungwad la note, me and two or more others are playing music. So those are the changes. Um, if you are like, man, I forgot what the A stem pronouns, objective pronouns are, go back and review the A stem video. That's going to really give you a good grasp on um, recognizing the pronouns. Um, and also the beginning of this video, which goes over the objective pronoun um, patterns again. Okay, so let's do a brief review of everything that we've talked about, um, the important and hi highlighting the important aspects. Okay. Okay, so here are some important notes from this PowerPoint. Udla note means to play or to make music. Um, the subjective, it's also known as the serial. It represents things happening all the time or in some cases happening right now. Um, the subjective has its own ending. Subjective pronouns are used. For the past, future, and sugar wood tenses, those three sister stems, I'll call them, they all have the same ending. Um, they are also all going to use subjective pronouns because this is what we call a subjective word or subjective verb. The past tense prefix is a wa or a way. Um, pronouns that begin with L change to H's and Y's drop off. Future tense um, is referenced with a caret prefix. L's still change to H's. The should, could, or would has an A prefix and L's still change to H's. The objective uses objective pronouns. It has its own ending. Um, and those are kind of the main points for this verb from this PowerPoint. All right, so I put the first one of every chart um, on this table because I want you to see all of them back to back. So I'm just using specifically the only conjugation for me, okay? Eventually, I would like you to just know the first one and just make the rest of them, uh, make the changes accordingly based on the patterns that you know about how the A stem verbs conjugate. So I know this is a lot for one video. Um, usually when I teach this, um, like, to second language learners, I used to teach high school. I would teach this over the course of like two weeks. I would break up what I taught just because it's a lot of content. So, um, but I also wanted to be very thorough in this video since this is the first video on how to conjugate verbs. And this is one of the most fundamental skills that you can have in um, speaking, being a speaker, learning our language. Conjugating verbs is of the utmost importance. I cannot stress that enough. So, <laughs> um, and I know sometimes it's kind of a dry um, topic to learn, but it is so important, okay? Like just critical. So anyway, um, I have the first change, the first conjugation of every single set on this combined chart. So in the subjective, you see gadlanota, you see the pronoun, I'm a musician, a stem subjective pronouns are used. Um, there's no prefix because it's just the subjective. The ending is ta. Okay, past tense. Wa god lanod. Wa is your prefix. Wa or away. You're also using subjective pronouns. Ending is da. Future tense. Un god lanod. Um, reference with a carrot. That's your prefix. Same ending is da. For the should could or would tense, it is a god lanod. I should could or play me would should could or would play music. An a or an ae drag is your tense prefix. Da is your ending. Wagadla node. Um, waga is your pronoun. You're using objective pronouns. There's no tense prefix because this is that. Um, the objective doesn't use those. It's a present like tense. But it does have its own ending, which is day. Okay. And then in the objective, the meaning is wagadla node. The meaning is I'm playing music. So those are the main critical points. This slide and the previous slide. I would like screenshot those because. All of that information is super important. So let's go over a little bit more review.
Okay, so when I teach this um, in class to second language learners, I use these tables, these charts. What I usually do is I give them all the changes and I cut the whole table up and I want them to put it in order because I stress the patterns. Even throughout this video, I stress that how important the patterns are. I want them to learn the patterns first before they start writing it, before they start speaking it because that's what's going to drive and make those other things like writing or speaking it much more easy. So... Um, what I usually do is I take this chart, I have all the conjugations on them, I cut them up, and then I give them to students in an envelope. Not not in my immersion setting, but like when I used to teach high school or I teach adults, I do that. That's how I teach this content. Um, I have them put it in order so that they learn the pronouns and the patterns. Um, so on this table, I give you the first one. What I have you do is make the changes for the rest of them. Um, so what I would do, if you're watching this video, is I would take a screenshot of this. <clears throat> um, print it off, um, make a few copies, maybe laminate it, practice writing in the rest of them, um, but using this as a tool for your studying, okay? I also have some for the past, future, should, could, or would, and the objective changes. All right, so I'm going to show those on the screen next. All right, here's the past tense uh, review chart. So what I would do again is screenshot this, print it out, laminate it. What you see is the highlighted portions. Those are what I, what I want you to pay attention to. If you want, you can take the book. Um, you can take screenshots of this PowerPoint and print them of all the changes. Again, like I mentioned, take them, cut them up, put them in order, use this chart. But use these highlighted portions um, to help you remember the pattern. So the highlighted, the boxes that are highlighted, those are prefix patterns. The ones with the stars, those are pronoun patterns or changes that happen to the pronouns, okay? So use this as a teaching or a studying tool as well. Here's the future tense um, chart. This is a study tool as well. You'll notice the two highlighted boxes. Those have to do with future tense prefix patterns. The two with the stars, those are pronoun changes. All right, take a screenshot of this and use it to help you study. Here is another chart. This one is for the should, could, or would tense. Um, again, you'll see the highlighted boxes, the ones in yellow. Those are prefix patterns. There's also two in purple. Those are exactly the same. So anything that has the same color, it means that it's the same exact prefix pattern. The stars means that there's changes happening to the pronouns here. So the two blue stars, it means that the same change to the pronoun is going to happen. The red star is a different change that's going to happen. Okay, screenshot this and use it as a study tool. All right, and here's our last one. This is the objective. So we know that we're using objective pronouns here, and it has its own ending, which is day, okay? So basically all you're going to do for this entire set is you're just going to change the pronoun. So wagadla no day, waga is the pronoun. You're just changing waga to za, to lo, to yago, to yo, or wa. Yungya ja lo na yona yungya, yungwa sa lo na yona yungwa, okay? Take this, use it as, um, take a screenshot of this and use it as a study tool, but that's basically all that you're doing for this one. So pretty easy. All right, I just wanted to add a little bit more review because I talked about all these conjugations, but what does that really mean in context? Well, in context, you're never going to see them in the chart format. We use those to help learners learn how verbs are conjugated based on the patterning system. But eventually, as your learning progresses, you're just going to hear like one snapshot of a verb in a story, in speech, in a learning setting, and that's it. And you're going to have to figure out what it means, or you're going to have to be able to say that depending on what you want to say or translate it in your head, okay? So that's what this activity is. So on the screen, I'm giving you just one word, and what I want you to do initially is to identify what do you see in this one verb conjugation, okay? 
use those skills to help you to decipher what the meaning is, okay? So the top of this sheet says, not to go do, it means, uh, what does it mean? Um, the change or the conjugation that's on the screen is a gedlanode, a gedlanode da. What do we see in a gedlanode? Do you see a prefix? Do you see the pronoun? What pattern do you see? First, I want you to identify what set of the five this comes from, what pronoun you see, what does that pronoun mean, and put together the entire meaning. So we know that A is the should, could, or would tense. Gia is two females. If this is the should, could, or would tense and it has to do with two females, and this verb means adlanot, to play or make music, well, that means that they should play music, right? It means that the two females should play music. That is the meaning of this verb, okay? Let's do that for a few more. Um, so let's go through those. Okay, next one is wahundlanod, wahundlanod. We see wa, which set does wa come from? We see who, that's the pronoun, but remember that looked like it had changed from perhaps maybe lu. Do you remember what lu means? And then the rest of the verb, we know that wa is part of the past tense. Lu is three or more males. They played music. That is the whole meaning of wahundlanod, the three or more males played music, okay? The rest of these, I am just going to say, um, and I want you to figure out what the meanings are. Use those skills that you can to identify what set it comes from, what's the pronoun, and give me the whole meaning of the verb, okay? Um, so I'll give you a little time, I'll say it, and then I'm just going to say the meaning, and I want to see how close you come to it, okay? All right, so not to do. What does it mean? Wagadla nade. Wagadla not. Hmm. What do you think? What do you see? Wagadla not. Wagadla nade. So wagadla nade means I'm playing music. This is the objective, and waga means me. I also know it's the objective because of the ending. Day is the only ending that represents the objective. But I also know that waga is an objective pronoun, so it's definitely an objective um, conjugation. And that helps me to form or create the meaning. All right, next one is yundlanot. Uh, yundlanota. Natigandu. What does it mean? Yundlanot. Yundlanota. What set does this come from? Look at the pronoun, look at the ending. Yundlanot, Yundlanota. Yundlanota means she's a musician, she plays music. Um, it can also mean she makes music. This is from the subjective or the serial. Okay, next one is unjadlanod, unjadlanoda, not the gandu, what does it mean? Unjadlanod, what's the prefix that you see? What set does that come from? What is the pronoun? What do you see on the ending? That's going to help you also identify what set this comes from. Unjadlanod. Well, we know carrot comes from the future tense. Ja is you too. So, this word means... You two will play music, or you two will make music. How close did you get to that? Good, let's do one more. All right, the next one is Dwadlanot, Dwadlanota. Nothing can do, hey, Dwadlanot. Dwadlanot. Or Dwadlanota. What set does this one come from? What is the pronoun? The pronoun is going to help you identify what set, as well as the ending. So, dwa is a subjective pronoun for all of us. 
ta is also a subjective ending. This comes from the subjective. Tuadla nota means we are all musicians. All of us are musicians. We all play or make music. Um, it can be any of those meanings. Um, it comes from the subjective. All right, so that is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this very thorough review of A stem verb conjugations um, using a sample verb adla note. Um, again, I just mentioned that I wanted to be really thorough with this verb conjugation video since it's the first one. And I want you to really, really focus on the patterns. Um, write them out. Write out every conjugation. Practice saying them. Eventually, don't even use the book. Don't even write them out. Just say them. Just know them in your head. It does take a lot of practice, a lot of studying. And it doesn't require all day, every day. I would say maybe 10 minutes. Work up to 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes a day. Um, and try to fit it in where you can. Um, make the family a part of it. Um, practice it with someone else. Um, review this video as needed um, and if you have any questions just let me know I can always explain this um, as needed so um, that's it